going on guys? Alex Rose 814 EDC and today I have a couple quick unboxings to do for you guys. Got one in from my good buddy Corey over at Stafford's EDC that is part of the, I believe, Lefty Pass Around Group. And I got a package in from Blade HQ from a, uh, or from obviously Blade HQ. And this is a knife that I purchased from them a couple days ago, Monday, Tuesday, something like that. Um, so both, I'm really excited for this one. Unboxing knife is the Quiet Carry Eddy. This is one that I still need to do a full review on. Um, you guys can see this is a heavy user. All the tape gunk on there. Um, you guys can see the rit die job on this side. I So I think I mixed teal and violet together maybe, trying to make like a blue. And I don't know if I didn't put in the correct measurements. I, I messed it up somehow because this side is gray, like a gray blue. And this side has like more of a purple with some like bluish, grayish coming through. Um, I bought this on, if you guys are fans of Quiet Carry, you guys are probably familiar with, whenever they are discontinuing an item, they drastically put them on sale. Um, so this is normally a $100 knife, you know, a little, just small, um, small knife, obviously, but it's nice because you have a 20 CV blade. So these normally go for a hundred bucks and they had them on sale for half off, so they were 50 bucks. And I had always wanted one and, um, and I think I talked about this in the unboxing, if you guys remember. But I pulled the trigger on one just specifically to have this as a little bit of a, you know, a beater knife. This is a fantastic um, gym shorts carry, a fantastic summer carry. Um, I've used the shit out of this. Uh, all the tape is from boxes from moving into my fiance and I's new apartment, taking a lot of, you know, cut through a lot of boxes and tape to, you know, get different things, unbox different things. I took this last weekend to um, help move my sister into college. So I opened a lot of boxes and it's just nice having a, a nice little nifty knife like this, that, you know, throw it in your pocket. Um, you don't have to worry about beating it up. Um, again, 20 CV, so you get a premium blade steel, great ergos. I still have to do my full review on this, um, but this is the unboxing knife. Kind of got a little sidetracked there. And uh, another thing I wanted to catch or uh, touch on is I, I already mentioned this a few videos ago. I know I have a ton of unboxings in a row. Um, this weekend I should be filming a couple different reviews, probably three, four, five, maybe even six. Um, I have a pretty big, you know, in my knife case, I have like almost two whole rows or maybe one and a half rows of loaner knives. Um, I know there's three or four, you know, right off the bat that, um, need done and sent out. So I'm probably gonna have a full week of, um, reviews for you guys. So if you guys are excited for that, definitely leave a comment down below, leave a like down below. Um, also, um, but yeah, so I'm going to unbox this, which I'm filming this on Friday, the 25th, I think of August. Um, yesterday was national knife day. Trying to break into the box here. Corey taped it up pretty good. I always kind of get confused on how these boxes, there we go. These boxes are hard to read sometimes on how you, you know, depending on how how well the person taped them and if you can see the, the holes and whatnot. Um, but I'm having some trouble with this one. I don't know what on earth is going on. I don't know why. I don't know. But I can get the knife out and that's all that matters. So, nothing else on there. So this knife is a Keto, Keto knife. Um, of course, this is a Kevin knife that he tossed in the pass around group. And I believe it's a button lock. Yes, it is a button lock. Pretty big knife. Um, looks like it has a lot of different ways to um, open it. So this should be a pretty fidget friendly knife. And I will also leave a link to Corey's channel down below. Please go check him out. Um, yeah, so this is the Kiyo Griffin. Little piece of paper right there. Designed by David Yin, or Jin, I'm assuming it's Yin. Um, oh, this is a sticker. Took me a minute to realize what this was, but I have a sticker. Um, little design card. Here is a another Kito or Kito 
design sticker. And then you get a, looks like a microfiber brand with Tito as well. Um, so I don't know much about it. I just know Kevin got this in. Um, I, I want to say they sent it to him to uh, check out. And I saw that he tossed him in the Passaron group and I figured it looked looked interesting enough for me to, uh, you know, get it in and check it out for you guys. So that's exactly what we're going to do. If I can close this back up. All right, perfect. So here is the knife. You guys can see, obviously, it's a titanium body knife with looks like some marbled carbon fiber inlays. Huge lanyard hole, hole, hole. Lanyard hole back here. Um, looks like there is a reversible um, mill titanium pocket clip. You can switch left to your righty, which is very nice. Here you have the button lock mechanism. Here you have a back flipper. You also have a front flipper that has very generous um, jipping and very generous um, leverage to flip that open, which is really nice. And then you have a hole for deployment. So kind of a thick knife. Has an interesting looking backspacer right there. Uh, you guys can see M390 on the, my phone will focus, M390 right there on the blade tang or the flipper tang. Um, the hardware looks kind of cool. Like the one pin right there above the um, filler tab has some interesting tooling, which is cool. Same with the pivot, it's the same tooling, but then you also have this tooling on the back. So kind of is giving like Microtech vibes with how, um, you know, tooling is all different, but it has, has a good weight to it. With the full review, I will try to look up specs for you guys and have, you know, my computer here with, you know, weight, size, stuff like that. Um, we're gonna give it a flick. Ooh. Detent is very light right off the bat. Um, that is something very noticeable. Um, and that's, you know, that can be the problem sometimes with button locks, especially with button locks with multiple deployment methods. Um, I mean, obviously we'll give it a, a nice flick and it fires right out of there. It's a very interesting blade shape. Um, it's kind of, kind of a spear point with a little bit of a belly. Um, decently thin edge. Blade stock is kind of thick. Obviously you have a poon down here. Has a swedge built into the top. Griffin right there. Um, that must be David Yin's um, maker's tag, maker's mark. No internal, oh no, sorry. There is internal milling on both sides. I'll try the button. All right, so it's a little, not the most, like I'm pushing it and it's not, all right, so I'm fully pushed in and yeah not the most intuitive um definitely have to give it a little bit of wrist back flipper works okay um i will say i don't love the flipper the front flipper because when i'm holding the knife it hits my finger a little bit back flipper try the front flipper yeah the detent is just so light on this um and honestly the button is very I don't know. It just has like a lot of sponginess to it. It doesn't feel like a very, like this, this uh, string, string, spring strength um, could be a little bit better. Yeah, just, it's not, I don't know. Between the light detent and really the button doesn't stick up very far on the knife. So I feel like you're really having to like push kind of far. Honestly, right off the bat, I'm, I'm not enjoying this. Um, I don't know what the price goes for. Again, I'll have to you know touch on that with my full review of it. Um, it's a cool looking knife. It's kind of futuristic looking with the way the blade shape is is handled. You have a big choil up here. Um, ergos are very comfortable. I'll give it that. It's very very comfortable. Choked up. You have a poon right there. Um, that's very comfortable. So ergos are probably the best thing going for it right now. Um, just because detent isn't great, and I don't love how the um, the button on the button lock feels but we'll have to carry it you know get used to it a little bit before i give my full review obviously on it so it might change a little bit uh, but right now i'm not really not really enjoying this too much so we'll have to see if that changes over the course of me having it but that is the keto griffin button lock 
Now this package, like I said, is coming from Blade HQ. And this is a knife that I purchased from them earlier in the week. And it is another Spyderco. Um, so I've had a decent amount of spy Spyderco's over my um, lifetime of being a knife collector. Um, I still have some you know, models that I have to handle so far. But um, I currently only have a um, pair of three in the collection. It is a bento box exclusive in K390. And I have some Rips Garage Tech Skinny Micarta Scales on there. Really love that knife. Um, I'll never get rid of it. It was a um, Christmas gift for my parents a couple years ago. And then my um, future in-laws got me the scales. Um, and I have a lynch clip on there. It's, it's a really cool build. I really enjoy it. I don't carry it as much as I should. Um, I want to get it sharpened to have a really nice mirror polished edge at some point. Um, but I have that right now in the collection. But I've had a Sage 5 Lightweight from Blade HQ also. One of their exclusives. Um, an M4 that I dyed. Um, I ended up getting rid of that knife. I kind of regret it because um, I, I really liked the overall, you know, sort of just, I, I like the lightweight knives from Spyderco. Um, so I kind of regret that a little bit, but I might maybe in the future get one um, if they still stay around. Um, but I've also had a pair of three lightweight that I really liked, but I got rid of it after I got my normal pair of three because I just didn't see the justification over having it when I knew I was going to carry the pair of three more. I've had a Manix two lightweight. Um, which is okay. I have yet to try a Manix, which I really want to because Applied Weapons Tech Scales came out with the um, the skinny um, linerless scales for them. And to me, it just looks so much better without having like the middle hump in the scales for the finger grooves. To me, that looks so ugly. It looks chunky. It looks really bad in my opinion. Um, so the the skinny scales from uh, Applied Weapons Tech look phenomenal. So at some point, I want to get a Manix 2 and do a little bit of a Manix 2 build with some scales, a, uh, a new um, titanium um, ball bearing lock bar, whatever it's called, and a clip on that. Um, but I've also had a Native 5 lightweight from, um, it was a St. Nick's exclusive in 4V and the um, red FRN. I really like that knife. I also want to get back into that sometime because Native 5 lightweights are just really all around fantastic knives to have. And I feel like everyone should have one in the collection. Is there anything else that I'm missing? So I guess I haven't handled, or I haven't had a ton of the collection. I've had a few. Um, I've kind of got my toes wet. Oh, I also had a, uh, a Warney PM2, which I liked, but I just didn't foresee myself carrying it that big or that much because of how big it was. Um, it was a um, cutlery shop exclusive in uh, CTS, CTS XHP. If I ever did a Warney... Um, pair of three. I think I'd buy that 100% because I really like the overall look of that knife. Just in a smaller package would be nice. Um, I've also had the first Spyderco I ever had in my collection was a Delica 4 Car Arms Edition, which I don't think they make anymore. I think they're discontinued. I ended up selling it back early on in my collecting career. Uh, but the Car Arms Edition was a, I believe it was a 2.5 inch blade and that was made to be carried in um, like cities that had a blade length limit so like I went to Boston back in 2018 I think it was with my fiance and our family uh, and they had a blade length limit of I think it was 2.5 inches or less so I carried that knife there it was really cool it had a little you know kind of stubby worn cliff sheep's foot style blade it, it was cool um, it was a very unique knife I kind of regret selling that um, but actually fun fact talking about Delica that is what this knife is. Um, so I pulled the trigger on a, sorry, I've been talking a lot in this video, but I pulled the trigger on a now discontinued model from Spyderco, the Delica Warncliffe in K390, which I'm very excited for. Um, now, like I just said, I have the um, Pair 3 in M390, and I love that knife. Um, and I just really like the I feel like K390 is kind of unique. Like I know Spyderco has it on a decent amount of the models now, but I feel like Spyderco is the only production company making it stuff with K390 that frequently. Um, and I know it's, you know, it's corrosion. Um, it's very prone to corrosion, but I think a lot of K390s I've seen get a really nice natural patina. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm just excited for it. And I've looked at the um, Warncliffe Delicas, either the K390 or the 20CV version that I think Knife Joy has a, as an exclusive, so many different times, and I just think the knife looks phenomenal. Um, it, just the blade shape, and I, I just think it looks really, really good. Um, but with with the purchase, I got because um, of National Knife Week, uh, Blade HQ 
I got a, my, you guys can't see, there we go. My other knife is a donut, which I probably won't really use because I don't have any donut knives. But this is actually pretty cool and I think I will use this. It is a RE, or a Ranger Eye, like a little patch, um, keychain holder, which is cool because now I can put this on my keys and I see there is a Blade HQ one in there. Um, but I have some other pretty cool ones from like Devo and you know Jack Wolf and stuff like that, uh, MBK. So Ranger Eye Caddy, that's what it's called. So that's very cool. I was actually pretty excited to get this because sometimes for their specials, they're, they're kind of dumb over the course of the years, but this is really cool. Then of course, the main attraction here is the Spyderco Delica 4 in K390, Spyderco High Performance sticker. You know, all the goodies that you typically, typically get in a um, Spyderco box, paperwork and stuff like that. And here is, if I can get this to close up. Here is the knife. So all the K390 models come with this blue FRN. Right there it says Spyderco Delica 4. Of course, that's a back lock. You can switch to the pot clip four different ways. Um, I'm gonna be getting rid of this pot clip very soon. You guys can see the, uh, I think that's either Sal or Eric, um, their maker's mark. Flies right out of there. And then like this blade shape, there's just something about it of how I don't know. It just is one of the best blade shapes I've, I think I've ever seen. I, I don't know why I'm so drawn to it, um, but I just remember how how comfortable this knife is in hand. You have the, you have the excuse me the ramp back here. Um, Seki City Japan. So this is a Japanese model. Spyderco K390 right there. Just a fantastic looking knife. Um, I believe these come in just around three inches, which is nice. Oh, and it's already pretty loosened up. Eh. Oh, it's pretty close to being spider flicked. You can spidey flick it. Has a little bit of blade play, um, but I am glad at least they're using the black clip instead of like the standard satin clip, just because it looks better. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about this. This is just gonna be, you know, I, I'm just excited to add it to the collection. It's gonna be a, a work, you know, a, a very good workhorse. This thing is gonna eat cardboard. I wanna get a nice good edge put on it um, by somebody. Might send it away to get one put on it, but just a very wicked looking warning. And I just think it fits this knife so well. Great in the, you know, great in the hands. Um, slow roll it out. And I've missed having a backlog in the collection. I haven't had one in for a little while. Um, so and it's nice because you can, you get a good enough flick. You can spidey flick it. Um, but it's nice just having that old fashioned slow roll, back lock, drop it down. Like there's some fidgetability with that and I really like it. Um, I'm not planning on keeping the stock though. I do want to pull my, pull my trigger, <laughs> pull the trigger on some Lynch Northwest scales. Um, they make for the Delica 4 where they are titanium and they turn this into a um, four finger choil, which is really nice. They have some speed holes in it. And it also comes with not their standard clip, but it comes custom with a um, Delica 4 basically clip for those scales you can't buy just the clip for. Um, so I'm really looking at getting into some of those, maybe some stone wash or uh, sandblasted ones. Because I just think that this knife is so nice and I'm, I already know I'm going to want to keep this in the collection for a while. Um, so I'd like to class it up and get those really nice scales put on it. But hopefully that'll be coming in the next couple weeks. But uh, yeah, so this was my unboxing of the Delica 4 Warncliffe in K390 and the Keto Griffin button lock that I'm not the biggest fan of right now. Um, we'll see if that changes, but yeah, I'm gonna wrap this up now because I've almost talked for 20 minutes. Um, and this was kind of a longer unboxing, so if you guys are still watching, thank you again um, for listening to me ramble, rave, stumble over my words, do the typical things that 814 ADC is known for. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys again so much for watching. Leave a comment down below. What are your guys' opinion on the K390 series from Spyderco? You have the Andela, the Endura, the Delica, and the Stretch 2, I think. And uh, let me know if you guys have any opinions on the, uh, the Keto Griffin, because I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. But I'm going to wrap this up now. So thank you guys again so much for watching. Uh, you know, I greatly appreciate each and every single one of you guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, morning, evening, night whenever you're watching this and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.